Good morning, Douglas. Hey, good morning. It is a wonderful day in central Indiana. Grass is green. Sun's not quite shining yet. It'll get here. Uh, can I just say hello and, uh, and, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Mm -hmm. and, and for all you kids and husbands, um, it's listening not too late. And, turn, and tuning in right now, I have an idea for you. Now, on this show, compliance suggests that we do not give recommendations, but I'm going to boldly give you a recommendation today. I was in South Bend yesterday, and next time you find yourself in South Bend, go ahead and drive just a wee bit north. To Niles, Michigan. You ever been to Niles? I don't know if I have, Doug. That's... Well, this is your kind of thing. Okay. And I actually drove through Napanee, which is definitely your kind of thing, um, on my way home. But but uh, uh, Gabrizo, I'm not an Italian, so Gabri G A B R I Z O dot com. That's you want to check this place out. It's an Italian cafe. They've really? got great breakfast, eight to two Wednesday through Sunday. Okay, so don't be showing up on a Monday. The eight to two, they've got awesome pastries. And if you go on their website, G A B R I Z O dot com, you're you're gonna just be glad you did. So uh, while you're looking at those disclaimers of ours, if you had two screens, you could keep those up and. Uh, Gabrazo.com. Yeah. That's my Muncie dialect. Gabrazo. Gabrazo. <laughs> somebody sent me a text today. They were at a restaurant in New York City uh, dining at Lombardi's Pizza. That was my recommendation. Uh, Solid. Of, um, uh, there's a better view of our disclaimers. That was my recommendation of some Italian dining in the New York City area. Uh, it took me a while. We're missing Amanda today, so it took me a while to get these disclaimers up there. Hopefully, you guys are. We are definitely missing Amanda today. Amanda sent me a uh, a, a really cool picture from uh, one of our favorite restaurants in Bonita Springs, and so Amanda is having the time of her life uh, down in Bonita, and we're excited for her. We're excited for Debbie. Debbie's got a big weekend ahead of her, and. Um, yeah, it, it is it is fun to do life with people, especially uh, Deb and Amanda. And I know you all love them. So I went, uh, Justin, uh, Debbie's son, is getting married tomorrow. And I remember just little bitty Justin going to his basketball games up there at Pendleton. And so it's kind of a funny thing to watch life develop and see lives uh, unfold with the uh, the majesty that life just gives you over time. So it, it is so cool. Like one of our friends we used to work with, Julie, her son is now, uh, he's going to be a fighter pilot. I mean, there, there's just, there's great things happening in the, in the life of kids and in time. So um, anyway, what do you, what do you want to get on with today? I, I was kind of busy yesterday, even though I was driving. How about you? <laughs> I had a busy day yesterday. It, it, uh, um, you know, we had the, the Federal Reserve that they released uh, their opinion on what should happen with interest rates, and I'll share this with you. And um, that in and of itself uh, is not a surprise, I guess. The, the, the news really isn't the deal. It's the response to the news that affects kind of how we kind of look at situations and what we might do. And I'll share the screen with you real quick here. Um, yeah, that's an important point. You've got the news and then, you know, what is the response to it? So this is the Federal Reserve rate, the, um, the, the rate, the Fed funds rate is, is when they say they're going to raise rates, it's the Fed funds rate that most often people look at. And this goes back nearly a decade, I suppose. And, and, and so the, the Fed funds rate is the, the kind of the inner workings of the banking systems interest rate they charge each other to borrow and lend money and so we came out of the 07 08 financial crisis the um housing crisis whatever you want to call it and the federal reserve basically took interest rates all the way down to zero so you can see we're at half a percent but that 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 
basically turns the faucet on full blast that here's money it's pretty inexpensive and then the economy started expanding and uh, to the point where they thought inflation was an issue and so at the end of 2015 going into 16 you see these little incremental increases that took it all the way up to two and a half percent interest rate and um, so looking back a decade that um, gives you a feel for what's gone on and yet um, uh, we're only at one percent in the fed funds rate right now and so I, I put this second chart together to show you a longer term uh, picture of the fed funds rate and you can see Back in 1955, we were probably similar to where we were in the last decade, maybe. And then we had a series of increasing interest rates over time. And this chart, believe it or not, includes over here on the very far right hand side, this week's interest rate increase. And so it's not even so on, on the on the shorter term when it looks significant on the longer term chart, uh, this week's interest rate doesn't even really show up. Yeah, and for several years we've been modeling what two, three percent inflation. Yeah, and so if you're pulling money off your retirement account, that that's that's your headwind. Yeah, uh, what will it be <laughs> here going into the future? Probably more than that. Yeah, if you look at this long-term picture or graph of interest rates over here, we went from. 2010 to 2016 at near zero. And if you look to the left of that, there's just not ever been a time like that. And what happened different this time with the federal funds is, is that the Federal Reserve turned on the spigot into the M2 measure of money supply, which has essentially gone up 40% since February. Of so there's more money out there that came from you know, PPP that came from just printing money, putting yeah. money back and forth. Yeah, so if, if you were wanting to envision it in the, in the olden days, Disney had their own currency when you go to, to Disney. And so, it, and you know, some people that would get that currency would kind of put it in their scrapbook, take it home. If it was a $20 Disney dollar, it was $20 of Disney things. But all along the way, Disney was changing the price of their rides. And they were also, they had a printing press that kept printing those things. And so those $20 Disney dollars that you might have had, you know, 20 years ago were worth a lot less holding on to them for those 20 years. And during this past 20 years, we've seen uh, costs rise, especially when you look at college costs, tuition, healthcare costs. Th those have been the leaders. Um, you look at the past year. And, and the pace has really shot up on gasoline and used cars. Those were the two biggest increases that I've seen in the past year. So uh, th those two will probably work themselves out over time, but um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what healthcare does, what college tuition does, those big expenses and draws that are really hard to plan for with families. And, and, you know, the, the grocery store has been a place where a lot of folks will notice the increase in costs. And so there's there's things that just kind of have a flashback to time in history, like in that 70s, where you had increasing costs and in, in the cost of substitutions that, um, you know, if I'm uh, not willing to buy this product, maybe I'll settle for the knockoff brand rather than the name brand. Or th those are the the ways that consumers address inflation. And some of you address it differently than me because you have experience living through this. Uh, my, my neighbor reminded me last night that there was a time in his life where he had to show his driver's license in order to buy gas. And so, you know, there's just, we've all have different experiences going through this, but I, I think that the number one takeaway is take a look at where your money's going. And uh, I can tell you for the Shreves, Caroline and I are like, well, we've, we've got to dial back eating out um, just because the cost is being passed on to us, the commodity costs. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm... And I just gave a recommendation to go out to eat this morning. Sorry, Caroline. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we, we went to a unique restaurant and took uh, a good number of family members with us last Saturday. And um, the food did not come back as requested and ordinarily I might let it slide or might not. And I was thinking, hmm, 
those two hamburgers uh, were 40 bucks right there. They should have uh, cooked them a little bit better. And so I was more, even more, my personality is more inclined like, dang, yeah. this is not what we ordered. And so th those things happen with the kind of the changes of expectations, I suppose, how inflation affects you. And I promised you all weeks ago that I remind you that a lot of inflation is caused by your politicians. I don't know who you voted for specifically, but uh, you need to let them know that you don't appreciate the inflation they brought to you, whether it's in your city, state, or federal government. So yeah. there's my uh, there's my uh, uh, advertising for that. Start with your city. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in central Indiana, the cities uh, spend money like they have control over the printing press, in my opinion. But uh, there's just uh, some kind of frugality that is necessary in all forms of uh, organizations, whether it's a family, a church, or a, a city government. As, um, our, one of the economists that we like is uh, Brian Westbury, and he titled one of his articles here in the last week or so, uh, Whipping Inflation, which goes back to Gerald Ford's uh, Whip Inflation Now, I think it's kind of what it was. But what Westbury was talking about is that inflation is a monetary thing that come, when you hear monetary policy, normally people are talking about the Federal Reserve. If you're a fiscal policy, that's when we're talking about your uh, government, which I just kind of was throwing under the bus there. But uh, his, what his opinion is when you're talking about monetary policy and you have to turn down the dial of the printing press, that the, the right thing for the Federal Reserve to do when money is flowing too freely is to increase short-term interest rates, which they did this week. And to do that to the point that it slows down the amount of money out there. Um, but what Westbury was saying is that that's only one side of the thing is that the governments have to spend less money. They have to stimulate the economy to create more opportunities. And so uh, instead of necessarily, in his, in his opinion, instead of necessarily giving incentives for things like um, uh, clean energy, you might rethink about how you deregulate a little bit of our traditional uh, energy sources to help lower the costs on those for the folks that are out there. And we, we've spoke about that. We've written about that for many months. The, the technology in the United States is what led us to the end of, of 2017 of being energy independent. And, you know, that's five years ago, we were energy independent. And that was all accomplished, not by the government intervention, but by the uh, uh, ingenuity of, of engineers and people in the United States. The government turning back the freedom of oil flowing through the country has kind of hit a speed bump, which has added to the inflation in that one. Yeah, and that's why we're seeing, when we scroll through the different indices that are doing well in, in the marketplace, a lot of those I never would have dreamt would be the top leaders going into 2022. And so we're, we're seeing that uh, uh, energy very high yeah, uh, we're seeing a lot of commodities winning, and uh, that's about it. And so I, I wrote down some ba basically, you know, we're we're seeing we could go through some of these, but just yeah, anything that's commodity or natural resources has been in demand. Yeah, let let, let me give you a kind of a quick market update. It's a difficult market. Yeah, oh, shall we move on? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. Uh, uh, this is the kind of the index I kind of created myself, the moving averages, the total stocks in our database. It just keeps creeping its way up to new highs. The 200-day uh, moving average is essentially almost a year uh, average, 50 days, a couple months, 21 days, basically the last month. And uh, all of these, if they're highlighted in yellow, they indicate that more than half of the stocks are below that index or that moving average. I'm sorry. And um, the this week, the 200 day, those stocks below their 200 day uh, moving average hit the highest level since we've been tracking that. And that would correlate with the market itself um, kind of hitting, uh, testing the lows of February this week. And so here's the, got to make sure I get all of the things that aren't allowed for your Beautiful eyes to see here and almost there. Okay, there we go. So here is the S&P 500 index. Um, we can see today that it's 
testing the loads that we had earlier. I think second, yeah, just a couple of days ago for the loads. So we hit a low here, bounced off, and then today it's testing that low. And, um, and you see basically that when a mar market bottoms out, we were hopeful the bottom was over here, then here it, it bounces off of these levels, rallies a little bit, bounces, and then it keeps testing that new low. So we'd, we'd love to see this be the low in this market and then start to a rally. A lot of times in the presidential election cycle, the second year tends to be one of the most challenging ones. The, the Whichever, it doesn't really matter which politician is in office, they start tinkering with things and the markets tend not to appreciate that so much during that second year. Switch over to the NASDAQ where you can see it's been a much more brutal uh, decline. We're basically... We peaked out over here in the uh, November time frame, and here we are today off of that high about 25%. Uh, and um, there's just not been really any place for those stocks to, to hide. We, we tended to move more out of the NASDAQ than the S&P in our decision grid over the last few months. Um, but the idea of uh, being able to escape, the only place is just to get completely out. Keith, can we go back to the charts real quick? I want to. And do you know where to look for the advanced decline um, line? If you if you go up to the drop down, and then all, yeah, and then it should be at the bottom of this list. There it is. Uh, oh, it? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I'll give it a quick look. You can keep talking, and yeah, we'll find so, out. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that Keith and I look at on a daily basis is, is what are what are shareholders doing? And it, are they buying? Are they selling? How much conviction do they have? And one of the ways that we take a look at this is an advanced decline line, and and that tells us are the sellers advancing? Or are the are the buyers declining? Vice versa? And and it, it's okay. I, I should have written it down, but. But anyway, we check that out every morning. It pops up on our screens automatically. <laughs> and um, and it just basically tells us that right now, uh, the sellers are out in full force. Yeah. And, and so you see it reflected in prices on the NASDAQ or the S&P 500 or the, the New York Stock Exchange, Dow Jones, that uh, we track and see a, well, how, how big is the spread and the spread right now is, man, the sellers are, are really out there. So don't want to sugarcoat anything. It's, it is really tough out there. And, oh, there it is. Nice. Um, and so it's, it's the, uh, so it's, it's the bottom of your screen. And if you see, hang on here, I haven't shared it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, uh, this is the new highs versus new lows. Uh, right over here. So let's see, let me draw on here. So right here is showing you how many, this is the New York uh, Stock Exchange stocks. The red line is showing you how many new highs are getting versus new lows. And so the new lows are really um, uh, winning the battle right now. You can see that when we hit the lows in the market a few weeks ago, it, it was the same thing, and then we had a rally, and, the, and then you see the blue line take back over there. And so, and this is a ton of stocks, whereas like the Dow Jones is 30 stocks, this is close to 3,000 stocks, right? So, it's a pretty good survey of, um, of the entire market, not just large companies, but also a lot of small companies in there, too. <clears throat> and this is what Doug was talking about the advanced decline line. And so, you can kind of see the trend on this that, that stocks, uh, are trending the, the advancers are getting beat by the decliners right now that's where we're at and we, we we long for that time where the the, the market turns and we sense it's probably going to take the, the summer months to yeah. kind of cycle through this we don't have a crystal ball that tells us exactly but when things take this kind of decline they don't often do like they did in march of 2020 when they just kind of hit a v and bounce back they might and we're thoroughly ready and willing to act on that but uh, the way that sellers are coming in right now just requires a lot of caution um can i switch gears and talk about uh your most important asset let's go for it <laughs> okay if you think what is your most important asset how do you answer that and uh, you know um, grandpa shreve would say uh, 
money definitely helps, but but you know your health, your 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 time, and so I was I was geeking out on charts and looking at uh, how to quantify America's time, and there's a group that measures this stuff. I don't know how they do it or who they survey, um, but if you, if you want to switch over to the screen, um, this this is a roadmap that basically says, hey, where are people spending their time? And um, Keith, if you hover over the blue on the top one. This is right uh, here. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the long, uh, this? Yeah, there you go. You see 100% um, of the people surveyed are sleeping. And, and so I, that, I, was, I was happy to see that, but if you, if you scroll down and hover over the next one, um, there's what, 4% are fasting. <laughs> so, and so uh, I don't know who you are if you took this survey, but go get a glass of water. Um, and, and this is a really interesting place to land if, if, if you like looking at data and time. And, and this compared 2019, 2020. And what we found is people commuted less in 2019, even before the pandemic. Sure. People were working from home more. Why? Because the technology allowed it. And so those working at home, uh, they found it really easy to do in 2020 because they were already doing it beforehand. Uh, people are driving less. Um, people were spending more time uh, in leisure and activity. And you see leisure in sports is pretty high. It's about as much as eating. And um, uh, part of the, the leisure in sports was television. And, and so, you know, like three hours a day, people are watching TV. I thought it was interesting on the educational activities. Um, the educational activities were, were, were pretty light. And then I, I broke that down by age. And it was pretty much, um, you know, 12 to 19 were educating themselves and everybody else was not. <laughs> so uh, just, just, you know, look, you might see that chart and say, okay, wh what about me? What would my chart look like? Or what would I like for it to look like in the summer of 2022? And um, maybe the education piece is one where we can just stop and have some deep thinking time. I think deep thinking time, I saw increase seven minutes in 2020, which, yeah. hey, that's a, on the plus side. That's a good trend. And uh, that'd be a good one to keep going. So how are you using your time? Uh, it, it's a great it's a great question. It's it's one of your most valuable resources. It looks uh, some of these choices are even discretionary versus non-discretionary, like caring for and helping household members, uh, caring for and helping non-household members. Some of those things are maybe thrust onto your platter. And, and I would think one of the things that's been a big deal for me over time is to incorporate margin into your time or you have space. So when some of those unexpected things come along your path, that they don't just blow out all the circuits. So, so as you're managing your time, I'd encourage you to include some margin in there so that you're better able to respond to those unpredictable things. Yeah. Heath, what else you got? You've always got something good. I don't want to monopolize all the time with my Italian restaurant recommendations and my time thoughts and market stuff. What, what do you have going on? I, this is a, this one I just have kept in my file to share with everybody because I'm kind of a, a cynical one. And um, uh, we were talking with a client this week who uh, had their um, identity kind of tapped into and stolen. And, and so the, the funny thing and, and, we recently had passed the, the April 18th deadline and, and uh, this is a tax voucher. Let's share, did I share that already or not? Here we go. And uh, with, with your tax return, if you didn't do it electronically, you just simply clip along this dotted line right here, fill in your name, rank and serial number. And then it has on the instructions up here, how to go about uh, where to mail this. And, and if you go down here and read um, right here, this bullet right here, it says enter your daytime phone number on your check along with your social security number. Okay. I just found that quite interesting that uh, the IRS would still like you to write your social security number 
on your uh, uh, return. I would encourage you not to write your social security number anywhere that's going to be mailed uh, without some type of security there. And who knows how long those things sit in the back of a semi-trailer before they get processed. But uh, I, th I found that kind of ironic as I was looking at tax return things in 2022. Yeah, the, you know, the, gen the gentleman we talked to this week who got taken advantage from uh, some just evil people preying on people and, um, you know, telling them to keep quiet about their activities or financial activities and, and respond to us immediately. I want to just encourage you. I, and these are savvy people. Uh, our clients are savvy people. It could happen to any of us uh, if they catch us at the right time of, of emotion or concern. And it, if, if it just doesn't feel right, I want to encourage you to um, call a loved one immediately. If you're not near someone or if you're living alone, call, call a loved one immediately and just say, hey, can I bounce this off you? And, uh, and th these, these thieves, they want you to isolate and they want you to just keep this quiet. So just, just bounce it off somebody, call us. Um, we'd ha happily be your wingman. There is nothing out there that requires gift cards or cash to be overnighted, yeah. to save anybody, to save anything, to save your credit, Yeah, to redeem your computer. None of those things require cash distribution of your social security card. Nobody, nobody should be calling you and asking about your social security number. Your bank won't do that. And so if you get any of these red flags, please, please call us, call your family members. Don't, don't respond to those things because they just begin a deep hole of, of challenges. They're so crafty. Like, you know, the, the folks that bug this guy, um, the, the number on his caller ID matched the phone number on the back of his credit card. They're very good. Uh, they could have a picture of, uh, you know, your grandson or granddaughter that pops up on your screen when you call it. Very crafty, but, but bounce it off others. We had a, a friend that's in the financial services industry. I was having lunch with him probably five years ago. He ended up being about a half hour late because of the particular scam. Um, they had not gone social media researched his family enough to find somebody that had some challenges in his family line yeah. and they were, they did a scam that said that that particular person was in jail which was close enough to being a possibility that it even for somebody that was young and vibrant got sucked into it pretty deep before he realized it was a scam so yeah. don't think it can't happen just be aware and do not keep it to yourself if you feel like you might have made a mistake uh, it's a lot easier to get things fixed the day of rather than waiting a day or so to tell somebody. It's a good word. Well, it's going to be a great weekend. You guys make the most of it. I am uh, thankful to join you today. Doug, yeah. any other words? Yeah, thanks for doing life with us. Yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Have a great one.